welcome to CS 112 lesson 14.4 text and fonts this is made for the University of Idaho CS 112 dual credit program so today we're going to be talking about text and fonts uh, in 14.3 we are talking more uh, kind of more about texts um, and just kind of making them show up on a screen and now we're going to start making it so that it's a little more interesting we can make them so that they're able to scroll and kind of move and we can kind of have uh, longer things in there instead of just whatever we can fit on a single screen um, think of this more as like a, a news ticker or something like that that you might see along the bottom of your like a TV program um, or news broadcast that you might see so we're going to start kind of working on this um, Fonts are different types of scripts. They're kind of they all have different looks to them. Uh, some are more kind of user friendly than others, um, and some of them kind of make it make a program feel more uh, realistic. Uh, if you had some kind of high tech looking font in a uh, medieval game, you'd be a little bit like, eh, I'm not really into it because it doesn't match. Uh, so actually, the the style of font is actually pretty important whenever you're writing a program. Um, especially something that's very user-based like that. Uh, it should be something that's easy to read if you're kind of working on businesses and stuff like this. Um, so to start off with, there's actually a way to figure, figure out uh, what is actually available on your computer. So we're going to go ahead and try this. And everyone's may be a little bit different. They might have something a little bit different than me. Uh, maybe I have a font on here that you don't have. Um, you're definitely free to go ahead and go like look for some fonts and kind of work on how to put these in. Um, so I can do a command, or kind of a command, if you will. Uh, print an array. And we haven't really talked about too much about that. And we, we yeah, we'll talk a little bit. A little bit. Um, but for now, all you need to know is we could do pfont.list. What this is going to do is this is going to give us a list of all of the fonts available. And you can actually scroll through. I'm using my scroll wheel to see the scroll wheel to go through this. Um, but you can also use the little arrows up here. And you can go and you can find one. You can be like, oh, okay, these are all, they all look exactly the same. So these aren't like um, if you're on using. Um, uh, Microsoft Word where it shows you what it looks like um, but you can kind of go through and you can kind of see like oh these are all these kind of different types um, for today we're going to um, work on that a little bit um, one thing that you should know um, especially with the comment that I made of like maybe I have a different font than what you have um, when a program is going to be run on the same computer you can choose any font that's already loaded um, your program will not always be always run on the same program though uh, and so since you need to submit them so maybe if you submit them to me or your teacher your teacher doesn't have them on their computer uh, so this gives you a chance to practice loading the font you would like to use uh, to the sketch folder so let's go ahead and go through this so to add a font to our processing program uh, we're going to search your computer using font so uh, what we can do is we can actually go and let me switch over to here we can go file and if you have a uh, or sorry not file sketch if we go to sketch we can add a file and let's see i need to see if you can actually see this or not no you cannot okay um see this will make it so you can see it okay uh, so you, you can add us you can add a file from the sketch tab and so we can go and we can actually go and find it and so um, a lot of times you might put this in your downloads if you go and you find one uh, and it's it can be kind of helpful that way uh, so you would go and find it and it would put it in the data section so uh, let's get back to it. it so if you decide to add one so declare we first off by making a type of font and so if we go back to our processing screen and I can kind of get rid of that I don't really need it uh, let's make a, uh, a type of font and it's called F so uh, next we're going to kind of work with this term F uh, so we're gonna say F equals and then we can use a term called or a command called create font and what this will do is it will convert a font from the format used uh, to the format used by processing uh, so that it can be used locally. 
uh, the whole name needs to be used in quotes. Uh, so, for example, let's see here. Let's go ahead and use one. Um, I have no idea what this is going to do. Let's try this one. M plan 10. I don't even know what that's going to look like. But that doesn't matter. Um, now we're going to do a size. So I'm going to say size 20. I feel like that's a pretty decent size. You're able to see what that looks like on the screen. Um, there's a couple other ones. Uh, text font. Uh, it sets the font and the size that will be drawn with the next text function. With the text function, uh, we can specify the color. We've talked about that before. Um, we can make the text function so that we can display it. Um, and we c the text can actually be printed using string, character flow, anything really. Uh, a couple other things you should know, uh, and I'm going to jump back over here, is we can use uh, text size, which is the number of pixels. Uh, we can align it. We can make it so that it centers. Uh, we can make it left aligned, right aligned. Um, if you've probably used those in uh, a word processor before, such as Google, uh, Google Docs or uh, Microsoft Word. Um, we can figure out how long the string is. Um, we can set the uh, spacing between lines of text and pixels. Um, so these are all different text functions. There's actually quite a few. And if I don't expect you to memorize these, um, definitely go and check out that references tab. Uh, if you ever just like, I want to try and do something with my text, just know that it probably is going to start with the term text. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and make a program with this. So uh, we kind of already started a little bit. Uh, so we made a type of font, uh, and that's going to be used in plantain. Uh, let's make a variable call, a string variable really, called message. And let's make a void setup and all that fun stuff. So let's do void setup. Uh, make a size. Uh, let's make it, I don't know. 700 by 700. Let's see if that works. Uh, if that's too big, definitely feel free to scale that down a little bit. Um, let's do implantain for 20. Um, let's do text font uh, F, because this is what we always did, already did. So you can kind of see that we use P font, then we declare P, then we say, okay, this is what the font's going to use. Uh, we're going to make it uh, 36. Then we're going to fill, and we're going to say, let's make it, uh, let's make the, let's make it like this, uh, 150. And let's say that the message says, um, oops, equals, uh, happy birthday to you. And semicolon. All right. Now let's do a void draw, and we're gonna make it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that then in the future you might be able to actually make this so that it scrolls. Uh, it's not gonna scroll quite that yet, uh, but you're gonna be kind of close. Uh, let's make the background. Um, let's just do white. Actually, no. Yeah, let's do white. Zero, zero, zero. Why not? That's easy. Uh, text align. Align left. Because that's how most things are. We're going to have a text. And it's going to, the message is going to be right there. And 600. So, push the little play button. Uh, oops, found a mismatch. Forgot to do a closing bracket. Try it again. There we go. So, happy birthday to you. Yay, it showed up. If you didn't get, to show, get it to show up like this, take a moment, go through, kind of see maybe where you went wrong, what, what might not be working. Feel free to watch this again. Uh, my voice doesn't go out anymore from you doing that. Okay. Now, 
we're going to talk a little bit about another thing that I'm constantly asked. Uh, another thing that I'm asked a lot is, can I put a weight in this? I don't want it to be running like 500 times a second, and it's not really 500 times per second. It's actually 60 times per second. Um, and so what we can actually do is we can slow the program down, and we can actually actually make it faster if we wanted to. Um, so we can actually slow the program down, so we can make it so that it runs at a different rate. And this is the frame rate. Um, you may hear gamers talking about this, is it like their frame rate. Uh, it, this is the same thing. Um, it's how fast our frames are refreshing. And what this is actually doing, and so in processing, every time that we go through the draw function, we have another, where this is the frame rate. So uh, if we're at 60 times per second, every second our program is running 60 times. So we can actually slow down our frame rate. And this is extremely helpful whenever we're making scrolling text that can be read by a user. Um, I'm sure you've seen it before where like something is just scrolling way too fast and you're like, I have no idea what that said. And so this is helpful in a way of like showing, okay, how can we make this so that it's, a, it's something that we can actually read. So I'm gonna, well, this is what I'll do. I'm going to show you real quickly that without anything moving, changing this frame rate isn't very helpful. And uh, one thing to note is that frame rate should not be in the draw function. Um, just like you shouldn't be changing back and forth on frame rates because it just doesn't work. Um, this is something that you would probably do in setup or uh, actually, yeah, this is just something that I would do in setup. Um, if you didn't have um, a void setup, void draw, um, I'd put it at the very top. Uh, it's just something that you should see. So let's see if I switch over to this. You'll see that it doesn't appear that there's anything changing. Um, and where this would actually look like it is changing is whenever I have something scrolling. Um, so a couple things just to kind of highlight uh, before we get to the actual assignment is um, what everything is kind of doing. So frame rate, this is what changes the frame. Uh, this sets the size and the type that we're going to use, uh, the color of the font, the different message that we're going to have. So happy birthday to you in this case. Uh, then we set our background, the, the text alignment. So it's aligned to the left of whatever kind of box that we put it in. So it's, it's set in the center of, and in this case, it's this, or sorry, in this case, it's to the left, so it's on the very far left, it's actually um, uh, butting up against uh, 170, and then it continues to the right from there. So it's kind of, this text is actually where it's starting. Um, and this is actually gonna be kind of important whenever you're kind of doing your assignment. So uh, hopefully this all kind of makes sense to you. Uh, feel free to let me know if it's not. Um, talk to your teacher if you need to. And now it's time for your assignment. So what you're going to do is you're going to create an assignment that scrolls across the bottom of the screen, uh, dipl displaying some type of information. Have the message loop so that when it leaves the left side, it reappears on the right side and then scrolls again. Uh, things to do, choose a different type, uh, font type, a different size, a different color. Uh, so make sure that it's loaded into the program. Uh, we kind of talked about that, the add file button that you can click. Um, Use a string for your message. Um, display the message at the bottom of the screen. Start the message on the right and scroll to the left. Um, you need to continuously decrease the x coordinate. And that's kind of the big hint that we have on here is, OK, how can you make this work? Um, and make it, whenever the message disappears, uh, it kind of pops back or starts showing back up on the other side. Uh, comment on all sections of this code. and as always, make sure you zip this folder. Again, it's extremely important that you zip this and then submit the entire folder. If you're not sure how to do that, check out that video that has how to zip this folder that was that should be included with all of these videos. So uh, good luck with that, and always, as always, happy coding.